Hey, welcome back. You can see here, this is my four by eight, all wood, homemade CNC router. And I wanna just give you an overview of how I built this thing so you can decide whether or not you wanna watch my several multi-part series on building my CNC. So before I forget, if you could subscribe, we'd appreciate it because it really helps us out. So stay tuned. So this here is the base. It's made out of all plywood glue ups. I did that because plywood's more stable than solid wood. I can lap joint all my plywood pieces and that made it a lot sturdier. I lap them at the top and at the bottom. Whatever base you make, it's gotta be sturdy. I didn't put this on wheels because I wanna keep a consistency in my floor height and that will affect my Z axis otherwise. So underneath the spoil board here, I've got a torsion box that's made out of MDF. Sheet of MDF with a bunch of MDF in a grid pattern where at all the intersections I have lap joints or half lap joints. It's all glued and screwed down to the piece of MDF. Then MDF sheets put on top of that and that was all screwed down. And then it was surfaced so it was equal distance all the way on the gantry and then again keeping the z-axis height consistent. These rails here are also a plywood glue up. This makes my x-axis. These x rails are as long as the box that I need plus the addition of the width of the gantry bracket. And you notice the rails are held back from the very front of the table. That's because the Z-axis bracket and the router all extend past that so it covers the table without a problem. So I use angle iron on the top and the bottom for my V-groove bearings to ride all the way down here for my motion on my X-axis. Originally I had this in a different position but then that got my bracket too far away so when I changed it like this that allowed my bracket to get a little closer and then I was able to eliminate the spacers that I had and that worked out better. So my Y brackets for the gantry are glue up just like everything else. Originally they went all the way through to the top but then I just cut it off right here so that I could square up my gantry because I was having a little problem keeping it square and I didn't have any way to adjust it so when I cut that I was able to shift it a little bit and that worked better as well. The motors I use to drive this are NEMA 34 1200 ounce motors. I've got one here for the X drive. I've got one on the other side. That's my A drive, which is slave to the X drive. I run it with a rack and a gear. When I installed this, I just put that in there and I kept tension on this by just pulling down and then screwing this off. And that keeps this engaged. Later on, I'm going to create a swing arm here with the spring pressure that will keep this engaged up into the gear or to the rack because sometimes I get a little problem and it'll slip and slide on me and that's gonna eliminate that problem. So my Y-axis rails have the same kind of angle iron mounted on them. It's split into two rails and the holes that these mount in are elongated so I can adjust these up and down to get the proper tension and to get the proper height off of the deck of the CNC table. Once these were adjusted where they needed to be, then I just screwed them off just to hold them in place permanently so they wouldn't move around on us. So the Y-axis gets its motion from this ball screw, which is driven by this NEMA 34 640 ounce motor. So my Z-axis bracket is driven by a ball screw as well and it uses another NEMA 34 640 ounce which is probably overkill but this isn't the original design that I show in my series I had to change this I was having trouble maintaining the router's tram position which is a fancy word for keeping it plumb in two directions and so I had to redesign this so I could brace it the router block in here pivots it tightens and adjusts right here these V-groove bearings here 
are mounted on eccentric bushings and I can just spin those to tighten that up. You'll see the angle iron is mounted to the back here of the Z-axis bracket. And someday when I grow up, I'm going to have a variable frequency drive instead of just a regular router to use as my spindle. So my wire maintenance is done in this cable track. My original wiring for all my stepper motors is all shielded wire, which I highly suggest that you do. When I ran my limit switches, when I ran my limit switches, I used non-shielded wire, and that's causing some frustration for me in my limits in my software. This is the problem you get from not using shielded wire. So the true heart of any CNC is what's in this box. So when I use my CNC, I do a lot of big pieces, cabinet pieces, large pieces of plywood. So I need some pretty good power requirements. So this is a 48 volt power source. And then you can see my four stepper drivers right there. Make sure that your stepper drivers are capable of taking the power that comes from your power source. I made the mistake of not doing that and I burn up my first set of drivers. So I used an Ethernet smooth stepper from Warp 9 because I wanted the Ethernet communication. And then I originally had one breakout board, but that didn't give me enough inputs for my limit switches. So I had to change my breakout board to this one here that you see, which was only $25, so the upgrade wasn't a big deal. But what it did was it used two of the ports off of the Ethernet smooth stepper and gives me quite a few more input inputs. The original one only used one port and I didn't have near enough input signals. And right here you can see all the wires for my limit switches. That's kind of embarrassing. It's not very neat, but I need to replace that with shielded wire. I use Mach 4 as my software. It works great. Even though I have a really slow PC, it's just reading G-code, it's not a problem. When complete, this thing is about $3,100, $3,200 total. That's with the software, with the PC that I bought, which is the cheapest PC I could find. You don't need a powerful PC, it's just running G-code, so it doesn't really make a difference. This CNC for me works great. I cut big pieces of plywood, I do engraving, I do carvings, it works really well for me. So lessons learned on this, it is made out of wood, and wood flexes, it expands, it contracts. One day, I'm going to build everything out of aluminum, but I need to get that variable frequency drive because I'm going to build my own aluminum parts with my wood CNC to upgrade my CNC to all aluminum. Kind of interesting how that works. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you watch the rest of the videos. If you get a chance, we'd love for you to subscribe. It really helps. We'll talk to you soon.